Watch to the end of this video and you'll understand the why and the how behind three killer music edits I use every day as a pro editor. I'll show you what beginners often get wrong, I'll reveal how to look at music structure, and I'll take you through the three edits in a way you can start implementing today. I've found that beginner editors often have a mental block that stops them from executing an effective music edit. I think it's inherent in the way timelines work, especially with sync sound. It makes you feel like you have these blocks of connected video and audio that you're supposed to just place next to one another. So it almost encourages you to stop and start audio and visuals at the same time. Instead, I'd like you to imagine the video and audio tracks as separate elements that move independently of one another, occasionally meeting together for a sync sound moment. Much of editing is this sort of sleight of hand, where you change the visual language while the soundtrack remains the same, or you change the soundtrack while the visual language remains the same. Now I'd like to show you how to look at music. Yes, I said look, not listen. It goes without saying that you'll need to select music that conveys the right emotion for your scene. However, I want to show you how to look at music structure via the audio waveform so you can find the right section of a track for your edits. I want to look at three parts. Intros or beginnings, outros or endings, and variations where there's a shift in the music. Let's do a quick search on Artlist and look at the audio waveforms of some of these tracks. First, let's check out some intros. Musicians craft intros to get the listener into a song in a pleasing way, and we have a great use for that. And now let's look at some endings. A good ending brings the song to a natural conclusion, and we have a great use for that too. Finally, let's look at some variations or a musical shift. These are dynamic changes in the middle of a track, usually when a song goes to a new section, like a verse to a chorus or a chorus to a bridge. You can spot them in the audio waveform because they often go from quiet to loud or loud to quiet. Let's download them so we can use them in our example. The first music edit I'd like to show you is one way to take the viewer from one scene to another. I've created two short scenes with stock footage from Artlist, a nature scene and a city scene. Let's use one of the musical outros or endings that we found. Remember that mental block I mentioned earlier where there's a tendency to start and stop visuals and sound at the same time? In this example, we're gonna break right through that. Let's place the beginning of the musical outro on the first shot of scene two. Let's check it out. Now why would you use this? I'd say it's like gently picking up the viewer in one scene and gently dropping them off in the next scene. Next time you watch a feature film or television show, listen to the musical score and you'll hear this transition over and over. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a PSA that I edited which utilizes this type of edit. Let's use one of the musical variations that we found, and let's place the frame the music shifts on right on the frame where the scene changes. So instead of a song ending and dropping you into the next scene, the musical variation will take us into the next scene with a slight shift in emotion. Let's take a look. It is a complex and expensive process, but now we have a solution. I use this when I want a slight emotional shift or a change in dynamics, and you want the same track to carry you into the second scene and continue on for a bit. Note that you can also use a musical variation to shift down, for instance, from fast to mellow or loud to quiet. For the third music edit, we're going to use a hard cut. Remember what I said about not always starting visuals and music at the same time? Well, like everything in editing and in life, here's an exception. We're going to have no music in scene one, and we're gonna start our music on the first frame of scene two. So let's take one of those strong intros and line up that first beat with the first frame of scene two. Now let's take a look. Why would you use this edit? I would describe it as punchy, powerful, and energetic. 
and it can be super effective if you use it in the right spot. If you got value out of this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And you might want to check out my free editing business kickstart guide at the link in the description. And now that you have some music edits under your belt, you should check out this video on sound design. Happy editing.